Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Together, they formed one of the fastest growing and most popular comedy teams of the 20th century. Appearing in 16 feature films in just eight short years, this team's meteoric rise to success was astonishing. What happened to cause this hugely popular comedy duo to split up after just 10 years together? We'll find out on this episode of Rerun Zone. Dean Martin was born Dino Paul Crocetti on June the 7th, 1917 in Steubenville, Ohio. Italian was his first language and he didn't speak English until he started first grade. In elementary school, he was bullied because he spoke broken English. It was here that he learned to fight and at 15 years old, he attempted a career in boxing known as Kid Crochet. Instead of money, he earned a broken nose, a scarred lip, and multiple broken knuckles. He dropped out of Steubenville High School because, according to him, he thought he knew more than the teachers did. He then worked in a steel mill, was a bootlegger, and served as a croupier and a blackjack dealer at a speakeasy. Dino began singing with local bands, copying the crooning styles of the Mills Brothers and Perry Como. He was using the name Dino Martini when he got his big break with the Ernie McKay Orchestra. By late 1940, he began to sing for Cleveland band leader Sammy Watkins, who suggested he change his name to Dean Martin. He stayed with Watkins until May 1943, but by the fall of that year, he was singing solo in New York City. He then found himself in the Army, but was released a year later due to a hernia. In 1945, Destiny stepped in, and he met a young comedian in New York City who he hit it off with immediately. His name was Jerry Lewis. Jerry was born Joseph Levitch on March the 16th, 1926, in Newark, New Jersey. His father was a vaudeville singer and master of ceremonies who performed under the stage name of Danny Lewis. Lewis later said that he stopped using the name Joseph so he wasn't confused with comedian Joe E. Lewis or boxer Joe Lewis. He developed what he called a record act when he was only 15, where he would lip sync to a phonograph playing off stage with wild expressions. At first, his act wasn't very good, and he had to make ends meet by working as a soda jerk and a theater usher. But later, he tried his act again at the urging of burlesque comedian Max Coleman. This time, the audience loved him, and he started to land more gigs. In 1945, when Jerry was only 19 years old and performing at the Glass Hat Club in New York City, he met singer Dean Martin while dining at the coffee shop of the Belmont Plaza Hotel. Jerry was eating an egg salad sandwich that went all over his tie and shirt when he took a bite. Dean was sitting at another table and busted out in laughter at the sight of Jerry. Lewis later said that he knew at that moment that he found the big brother and friend that he'd been looking for. They got to know each other pretty well after that first meeting, but still weren't working together. Dean was working in Chicago at the Rio Cabana, and Jerry was at Skinny D'Amato's 500 Club in Atlantic City. One night, the singer at the 500 Club had strep throat, and Skinny asked Jerry if he knew anyone that could step in for him, but Skinny said that he didn't want a singer. Jerry told him he knew a singer who wasn't just a singer, but who also did a comedy routine with Jerry. So Skinny rang up Dean, who was just back from Chicago, and told him to come down to Atlantic City. At first, Dean sang a couple of songs and Jerry did his record act, but Skinny wasn't happy with that. He told Jerry on his break to either go out with Dean and do something funny together, or they'd both be wearing cement shoes. So Jerry tore a piece of the bag of the pastrami sandwich he was eating and started to scribble down ideas for what they could do in their next set together. He went to Dean and told him what they were going to do, and when they hit the stage, they ended up doing a two-hour and 20-minute comedy set that blew the doors off the room. By the next night, the word was out. Martin and Lewis were an instant success. No one had ever seen a comedy act like this before. Dean Martin brought a smooth sex appeal, while Jerry Lewis brought his wacky slapstick humor to the stage. You couldn't get into the club after word got out, Within seven days, there were lines around the corner with people waiting to see this crazy new comedy act. Soon, everybody wanted a ride on the Martin and Lewis train. They made their television debut on June the 20th, 1948, on CBS's Toast of the Town. 
and by 1949, they were the stars of their own national radio show that lasted until 1953. Movie studios were also taking notice, and Paramount was the first to come calling. The boys were given a cameo in the 1949 film My Friend Irma, and also its sequel My Friend Irma Goes West. Paramount soon cast the boys to star in their first feature film, At War with the Army, in 1950. The movie was a hit and led to a series of 14 comedy hits through 1956. People loved their movies, but in later years, both Lewis and Martin said they were bothered by the formula that forced them to play the same types of roles over and over again. The audience loved them, though, and almost all of their movies were huge hits. Even though they were very successful, their relationship began to have problems. Martin started thinking that Lewis had too much control over their work, so he started talking about going back to his solo career. Lewis, who still looked up to Martin, felt betrayed by this talk. After a while, he and Martin stopped talking. Over time, Martin's roles in their movies became less important, while Lewis got most of the praise from the critics. This put a lot of stress on their relationship and became embarrassing for Martin when in 1954, a photo of the team was used for the cover of Look Magazine, but Martin was cropped out. Martin and Lewis officially broke up on June the 24th, 1956, exactly 10 years after the team was formed. They both had successful solo careers after that, and neither one would talk about why they broke up or even think about getting back together. Martin's popularity continued as a member of Frank Sinatra's Rat Pack, and Lewis scored a series of hits with films like The Bellboy, The Ladies' Man, and The Nutty Professor. Despite their individual success and the passing of time, they still didn't speak to each other. Then, 20 years after they broke up, on the Jerry Lewis Muscular Dystrophy Telethon in September 1976, Frank Sinatra surprised Lewis. Frank asked Jerry if a big fan could come out and say hi. Jerry said sure, and out came Dean Martin. Would you send my friend out, please? Okay, where, okay, where is he? We just send him out here. Come here. Everyone went crazy. They hugged with tears in their eyes and a standing ovation from the audience. Then Jerry asked Dean, so, you working? And everyone broke up with laughter. Still, you can tell that it was a very uncomfortable moment for both men as they tried to ad lib, but really didn't know what to say to each other. You know, it seems like uh, we, we haven't seen each the... other uh, for 20 years. <laughs> but it wasn't until the death of Dean Martin's son in March 1987 that they actually resumed their friendship and remained friends for the rest of Dean's life. They only performed together once more, and that was on Martin's 72nd birthday in 1989. I got a kiss you on her lips. No. That's a... Are you busy later? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, you surprised me. I mean, I love you. <laughs> I love you, Dean. Dean Martin died in his sleep on December 25, 1995, at the age of 78. To celebrate his late friend, Jerry wrote a book called Dean and Me, A Love Story, telling the story of his best friend. After Martin had died, Lewis started talking more fondly about the singer in public. He even said that he was to blame for how badly the two broke up. Lewis said that Dean was hurting so badly and he felt terrible that he hadn't seen it before. Jerry Lewis died on August the 20th, 2017, after being struck by a series of illnesses, including diabetes and throat cancer, from years of heavy smoking. He was 91 years old. Martin and Lewis paved the way for a new kind of comedy team, one with a combination of sex appeal and slapstick comedy, and their candle burned brightly for a full decade before it finally burned out. If you were a fan, what was your favorite Martin and Lois movie? Or were you more of a fan of their solo work? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, this is Rich from Rerun Zone, signing off. <laughs>